One of the harder parts of approaching a symmetrical image is actually deciding where your stop and start point is going to be if you're trying to do that flip thing. It's pretty clear in the case of this graphic, but if in doubt, there is an additional option you can go with. It will be under the view menu. And what you're looking for is called rulers, show rulers. Once you turn your rulers on, they show up at the top and the left. You go into the ruler itself, you click and drag over to the center, and this is just with an arrow tool. I'm not drawing anything technically. I'm creating a non-printing guide. Um, that's exactly what this is called. It's a guide, and it's a little turquoise line. So this is what I'm going to use as my reference point uh, when I'm trying to decide where to stop and start. The first version of this I'm going to do with the pen tool, but before I jump in, I want to address one other little consideration and I want to show you kind of what I'm talking about. If you do a normal um, drawing or you do anything really in Illustrator, and I'm going to pick a couple of shapes here just to sort of talk about this. Uh, I have an ellipse, it's sort of almost a circle, uh, and it currently has one point um, of stroke set on it. I'm going to increase that. And at the moment it's really hard to tell exactly how this is looking because I have red guides on this layer, um, path guides and, and so forth, and I've got a red stroke. So it gets a little bit lost in there. Because most of what I'm drawing on this particular, particular layer needs to be red, I actually want to change that right now. So I'm going to double click on the icon part of the layer and I am going to change the color from light red to anything that I think is going to show up a little bit better. I'm going to pick green. That certainly should contrast really well with the red and it does show up better. All right, so what I want you to see with this, and I'm going to enlarge it so that it is very large indeed, um, is you see this stroke indicated, or rather the original path in the middle, and the stroke goes inside the shape and outside the shape. This is the default setting uh, for pretty much any path in Illustrator not the width of the stroke itself, but how the stroke is distributed. That's going to be a problem for us in terms of drawing this fleur de lis because it will be really tough for us to figure out exactly how and where to place the points um, in the middle of the path information that's shown here. And there's a solution to this that will make working with all of this stuff a bit easier. Uh, I'm going to open up my stroke panel. If you uh, already have yours open, great. If you don't, you uh, are going to want to take a look at this and I want to show you a um, couple of really quick things that will make this a little easier and I'm deliberately creating a, an open path as well. Uh, when you draw an open path the same thing happens. You get half above and half below. Okay, when you have a closed path selected, and this only works on closed paths um, because they are the only ones that have an inside and an outside. Um, you're going to have some options in terms of the stroke alignment. The default position uh, for any stroke is going to be half in, half out is in terms of how it distributes the, the amount. So I have a 43 point stroke right now on this object. That means 21 and a half ish uh, amount of that is on the inside and 21 and a half ish is on the outside. If you need it either all in or all out, which is what we need to do to more easily draw our fleur de lis, you can choose one of the other two options. The middle one pushes the full stroke amount to the inside. The third one over pushes the full stroke to the outside. And that's what we need for the fleur de lis and later for the eagle. So the good news is there's an absolute way of doing this. The, it's not bad news, but the be aware of it news is this does not apply to open paths. So you must be careful and aware as you're drawing this that you need to be creating complete closed objects in order to take advantage of this particular tool set. Okay, so having said that, I am going to draw either on the inside or the outside of this consistently and I'm going to then use whichever of the stroke alignment options is appropriate. If I'm drawing on the outside, I'll push the full stroke to the inside. If I'm drawing on the inside, I'll push the full stroke to the outside. I feel today like I want to draw along the outside edge. 
So I'm going to do that. I'm using the pen tool. I'll zoom in as much as I need to in the different sections. Um, you want an absolute minimal number of points and it can be done with not a ton. And you probably don't want to draw it with a boatload of stroke on there because it's crazy looking and weirdly distracting and all that kind of stuff. So turn it down so that it's something reasonable. And I don't normally do maybe a couple of points while I'm drawing. And you may want to draw this with something other than the red so that you can more easily visualize how yours is looking. You can make it red later, but when you're doing it at first, make it something really distinct. I have a green fill there, so I don't want to make mine green actually now that I think about it. I'm going to do orange because the orange will show up um, in contrast to the red, but it will be visible relative to the um, path information that I've got going too. Okay, so I've got, and apparently I did in fact set it for green even after all that. So if in doubt, um, change it to something that makes sense. All right, now mine's dirt colored, but I can live with dirt. So um, keep in mind as well, you're gonna need to use those split curve points a good little bit because there are a lot of those dramatic shape changes if you are not comfortable drawing those, you can always leave a curve point at those corner transitions and come back later on. And then, as I mentioned previously, I'm going to pretend that the cuts that the eagle is making are not happening. And I'm going to draw what that inner portion is would look like um, because that's going to make this much easier to work with. I'll have my closed object then, um, and it's going to work better than if I try to do them as sections. All right, so not a ton of points. I'll count them up in a minute and let you know how many I ended up with. And if your original isn't perfect, that's fine. That's not what this initial part is supposed to be about you can come back and you can add points and you can alter points and, and all that kind of stuff um, until it does fit really well. And you're going to spend the time to do it because, first of all, this is the central element of a pretty significant project, but secondly, because you're going to create a duplicate to get the other side. So, a little tweaking as necessary. I'm going to show you an alternate to just drawing it like I did, um, especially if you're not super comfortable with the pen tool yet and find the, if it's really off shape, if it really distracts you. So that's, that's pretty close, just drawing it with the pen tool and it has, there's a way of um, making it count the points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, so somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 20 would be a good amount. Anything more than that and you're getting into a shape that's not going to be as smooth because quite frankly you have too many points uh, and, and that type of thing. So I placed mine and I did the splits as I needed to for the curves and all that kind of thing. Um, I'm going to do it one more time with the pen tool without doing that and I'll show you how you'd sort of go back. Now. But there's a couple ways. There are some people who go ahead and they make everything a curve point. Um, and then there's an alternate method. And obviously I'm not even trying to make it fit at that bottom curve there. There's an alternate method where you make everything a corner point. And either of those approaches is about personal preference. So long as you're getting points more or less where they need to be, even if it doesn't fit great right off the bat, you come back in with the white arrow down the road, do a quick reshape, and you're in business. If you're trying to decide where the points need to go, the general rule of thumb is anytime there's a long span where you'd have to have super long handles, or anytime there's a direction change, you need to do that. So obviously right now it looks horrible. I'll show you. Horrible. Uh, but I'm going to come back in in just a second 
uh, and use the um, convert anchor point tool to improve that as well as the white arrow and then it'll look fine in no time. I'm going to stop and restart the video uh, and pick up from here in just a second.